<clears throat> All right, so today in math class, we're talking about decimals and how to uh, write those decimals in different forms. Um, there are four major forms we focused on today. We had standard form, word form, expanded form, and the expanded form in the power of 10. Um, standard form is just your regular word, I mean, using your regular numbers. Okay, so the one that we're going to use as an example is this one over here. We have 7 and 65 hundredths. So in standard form, it would just be 7 and 65 hundredths, just using your regular digits. Word form is just writing it out. Uh, we write it out exactly how we say it. So in this case, we say 7 and, the decimal point means and, 65 hundredths because the five is in the hundreds place, so that's why we give it the name hundreds. So you write it out seven and 65 hundreds. Don't forget on the end, since we're talking about hundreds, you have to put that THS on the end. All right. Expanded form is taking it, um, taking our decimal number and kind of breaking it up. Uh, we know our seven is in the ones place, so we write just seven. Plus, we're going to look at our next place. Six is actually in the tenths place, so we're going to write plus six tenths. All right. And our five is in the thousand. I'm mean, sorry, hundreds place, so we're going to write plus five. Hundreds. So when we add that all together, seven plus six tenths plus five hundredths, it gives us seven and sixty-five hundredths. And then last but not least, uh, the power of ten. Now this is all about looking at the place value again too, and it's another way of writing the expanded form. Um, so we're looking at the one uh, seven, which is in the ones place. So we're we'll do seven times one because it's in the ones place. Plus, our six is in the tenths place, so it's going to be plus six times one tenth, since the six is in the tenths place. Plus, and we're going to go to our five, which is in the hundredths place, plus five times one over one hundred. Now the last thing that we uh, we actually did not get a chance to talk about this in class, but it's on the homework because um, this lesson is going to take about two, maybe even three days to cover, uh, so I can get to that uh, fluidity that I want from the whole class. Um, the last part is trying to figure out which decimals are equivalent. So we're going to I'm actually going to use example uh, 22 from the homework. Uh, for number 22, they have this. They have 2.6, which is 2 and 6 tenths. They have 2.60, which is 2 and 60 hundredths. They have 2.06, which is 2 and 6 hundredths. And then the last one that they have is 2.600, 2 and 600 thousandths. Now, to see if they're equivalent or not, you're going to look and see if that they have a 2 and a 6 and those are in the same places. Now if we look here, our 2 is in the 1's place, our 6 is in the 10's place. Now let's go over here to our second one. The 2 is still in the 1's place, the 6 is still in the 10's place, but they added on the 0. The 0 is just a placeholder, it really doesn't matter. So if we took that 0 off, we will still have 2 and 6 tenths. Now let's look at the third one. We have a two in the ten, uh, ones place. We have a zero in the tens place. Now that's different from the rest of those. The six is actually in the hundreds place this time. So we know this one is actually off. It's not equivalent. And just to double check, here we have our two in the ones place and our six in the tens place. That's still good. And remember, all the zeros behind it don't matter. So if we cross all these zeros out, all three of these would say two and six tenths. 